Hi guys, it's uh, Panorob here again. I'm just here to talk about my... Well, this will be my proper review of Doctor Who Flux. Don't be finale is literally just finished. So... <clears throat> obviously I haven't done an episode-by-episode episode breakdown because the first episode was obviously literally just set up and then I didn't feel comfortable reviewing it episode-by-episode episode with the story being... So interlinked. This is obviously like the f this is basically the first serial of the revived series. But how I feel having just come off the finale is that that was reasonably good. Um, obviously, you know if you've been watching my channel for a while, or if you go back and watch any of my Doctor Who videos, you'll know that I've been watching since two thousand five. Uh, I'm deep into the classic stuff, um, so I know my way around. Doctor Who, I'm not just coming in, you know, on, on the back of this series. Um, and how I feel is about the, the current era is that if Series 11 was kind of a, the baseline for this era, that it's generally improved gradually over time. Um, in general, how I feel about Flux is that I like the serialised nature of it. Um... And there are definitely some great individual episodes. Obviously, War of the Sun Tyrant sticks out as a, as a great individual episode. As does um, episode three, Once Upon a Time, which, which had a more kind of trippy uh, structure, but I enjoyed it. Uh, but generally, it's been another... You know, if series 12 was, improvement, was an improvement on series 11 then Series 13, Flux, is definitely an improvement on Series 12. Uh, whether or not the serialised nature of it actually worked, I'm not sure. Like, I've just come off the finale uh, now, and I wouldn't say that it worked. Um, there were There's definitely elements of this, uh, this series that were pushed to the wayside. Uh, the whole thing with Diane seems kind of pointless now. You know, retroactively, given how, how important she was in episode one. Um, especially uh, given the way it was just left off between her and uh, John Bishop. Um, the whole thing with Swarm and Azor, even though they were great villains, they maintain they are great villains, they kind of wrapped up in a very uh, unsatisfying way for me. I thought they were... Like, it was good to know what their um, motivation was in a kind of metaphysical way, but for it to kind of wrap up in a, oh, they're just, it's just kind of over, is a bit disappointing. And <laughs> while we're on the subject of things that didn't really go anywhere, the whole Bell and Vinda thing didn't really go anywhere. I mean, we're unfortunate to to know that they, we don't know if they're the Doctor's parents or not, but either way, they don't really go anywhere unless they're going to come up in the the specials. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, some people might mention that the uh, Doctor's memories uh, in the fob watch that Tech Tayoon had uh, not coming up again might be a bit of a bother for them. I would will generally go ahead and say that um, I'm happy with the whole thing of, oh, the Doctor has the watch. She could open it. She probably won't because it doesn't matter because the Doctor is the Doctor. And that's all we really need to know. I'm okay with that, generally. But uh, apart from those th those three things, so Bell and Vinda not really going anywhere, Diane not really going anywhere, and Swarm and Azur not really going anywhere at the end, I think that, in general, the whole Flux thing was quite a good way to formulate a season, even if it was kind of compromised because coronavirus. I think how I feel about the Jodie Whittaker era more generally will have to come into focus as the specials play out over the coming year, because obviously it's December as I record this. Um, yeah, I'd, I'm glad that Dan is still going to be on the TARDIS because I didn't feel like he got enough, um, enough time with the Doctor to really be a character, so I'm glad we're going to hopefully characterise him a bit more. And then... 
Yeah, there's not much to say, really. Like, the things that I've said kind of fell flat to me, fell flat. I think they'll fall flat for a lot of people. But in general, I liked the serialised nature. I liked the jeopardy of it. And there were some really good, strong individual episodes. So that's my general review of Doctor Who Flux, is that it's another improvement on the baseline of Series 11. The Jodie Whittaker era is not my favourite, but it's not the worst. And... You know, despite certain things falling flat in this finale, it didn't turn out as badly as, you know, we ho- we some people thought it might do. We didn't shift into a new universe. Bell and Vinda probably aren't the Doctor's parents. None of this that stuff really happened, which kind of makes certain uh, anxieties that we've had as fans seem a bit silly now, doesn't it? Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's my <laughs> that's my overall take of Doctor Who, um, Series 13, also known as Flux. Generally, good. I don't know how important any of these things will be in the long run, but generally, good. Okay, see you guys. Bye.